Hey guys, Avi here. Welcome back to Avi's Garage. Uh, after posting a video on how to install the SDS 200 in my Subaru, um, I was uh, talking on social about a couple of the accessories I connected to it, and I think it's easier to make a video than it is to um, to write it out. So it's nighttime. Sorry about that. I'll do my best to show you what I'm talking about. But um, here we go. So there's the SDS mounted in the uh, dashboard. Um, the first thing I want to show is how I'm connecting it to my home Wi-Fi. And so on the Ethernet port, I've got that plugged in and I have the USB plugged in to a little dongle kind of thing that uh, goes in the cubby below. I don't really know how to say it. It's a Vonets. Um, this is a Wi-Fi bridge. So this connects to Wi-Fi and it provides ethernet, uh, wired ethernet. So when I'm in my driveway, this connects to my home Wi-Fi and I can use ProScan to, to scan while, uh, while the car is in the driveway. Now the problem with that is that uh, this radio is wired to only be on when the key is in the accessory position, in the ACC position, which is what I wanted. So that way the stereo goes on and the scanner goes on at the same time. However, if I am using the scanner from inside the house, I don't want to drain the car battery. And so I have a solution to that. All right, uh, what I have here is one of those lithium ion power banks. Pick this one up on Amazon, it was about 50 bucks. Um, it, uh, I don't know how many milliamp hours, I don't really trust what Amazon says anyway. Um, this one can, um, it can uh, jump the car, but more importantly, it's got um, USB charging, uh, some USB out uh, power ports, and a uh, barrel connector. And what you can connect to that barrel connector, since it's 12 volts, is 12 volt accessories. So let me show you how I have this wired in. All right, so under the dash here, um, by the floorboard, I have uh, two, two little jacks sticking out. Um, I have a USB charging jack and I have a barrel connector. Um, this barrel connector goes to the SDS power barrel connector and that's going to power off of the battery pack. And then this uh, USB cable connects to the cigarette lighter jack under there and then tucks behind the molding. And so when I'm driving it charges the uh, power pack. Uh, so let me get that hooked up and show you what it looks like. All right, so I've gone ahead and hooked it up. Um, you can see that the 12 volts is on right now. I've got about 60% battery. Uh, very hard to make out, but the uh, USB cable is connected to it for charging, and that'll charge the unit uh, while I'm driving. And the barrel connector on it, the 12 volt connector, is connected to the SDS. So now, if I turn the battery pack on and go to the radio, um, it should turn right on. There we go. And so now, without uh, putting the car into the ACC position, I can use the radio from in my house. Um, because I don't want to leave the battery pack on the floor here, um, I added uh, the rough side of Velcro to the back of it, and that actually sticks nicely to the carpet. So for most of the time, I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, if I'm worried about it getting stolen uh, or something like that, I added uh, the soft part of the Velcro glued underneath the uh, glove box and so I can poke it up there. Uh, the only problem is you don't really have easy access to the display. So um, for the most part, uh, it'll live there and uh, I'll Velcro it up when I want it out of the way. Um, all right, one last mod I did. Uh, give me one second. All right, uh, in my last video about the SDS, I talked about pre-wiring in a uh, RJ11 um, with the intent of eventually adding a GPS. And so here is my shifter, and if I carefully pull the molding up here and move this aside, you can see a little GPS module hidden in here. So you can see an RJ11 connector, and uh, this is a Neo 7M um, uh, from, uh, what is it, Blocks? 
Uh, I'll have a link to that in the description. So it was about 11 bucks on Amazon. Um, you can either solder the connector onto it or um, use some female pin headers like I did here. And then I connected the antenna. Now the antenna runs around the molding. It runs under the dashboard. And then right here above the window, it uh, pokes out from the dashboard and is tucked nicely uh, by the glass. And it's actually fairly small. I'm up close to it. Um, so far, it's been working great. I get a lock in about uh, 30 seconds from when I turn on the radio. Um, I assume that's from a cold start since it's not powered um, when I'm not in the vehicle. And if you look at the display of the radio, you'll see where it says GPS in the ro lower right hand corner. Now I've learned this means that the GPS is connected and you're getting data from it. It doesn't mean you have a lock. The best way to find out if you do have a lock is to customize the display and where the frequency is here, you can do latitude and longitude. So um, the first time you set it up, I suggest changing one of your displays to show latitude and longitude. That way you can be sure you're actually getting a location and uh, not just data from the GPS saying it doesn't have a location, which is really all that the GPS says. That's kind of a dumb indicator. Um, and so that is how I hooked up this little GPS. And then, you know, I close up the molding and no one's the wiser that it's hooked up. Um, and it's powered off of the uh, RJ11 jack on the uh, back of the, the unit. And that's it for this nighttime uh, episode of Avi's Garage. Uh, I'll leave links in the comments to the accessories. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Later, guys.